Do not answer that question, Alex. Answer the question, Alex. This uh, engine is not going anywhere until we discuss this as a council. There's no unilateral decisions being made. This is not the democracy you fought for. Leighton. I never wanted anyone to look at me like that again. But it may be the price I'll have to pay for protecting this pocket of humanity we call New Eden. 471 souls strong. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. This is a spoilerful podcast about Snowpiercer, 1001 Cars Long. We are covering Snowpiercer, Season 4, Episodes 1 through 4, as seen on AMC+. We will be breaking down each one of the episodes and getting into a bit of a discussion about what we think about each episode. We will begin with Episode 1, Snakes in the Garden. A quick synopsis, months after Snowpiercer and Big Alice parted ways, Till and Ben encounter unforeseen enemies when Melanie sends them off train on a reconnaissance mission. Meanwhile, the residents of New Eden face uncertain times and unknown adversaries. So, (laughs) what did you think about episode one? Well, it's so funny, too, because I had to jump back into the world of Snowpiercer Mm because I was away from it for so long. Originally, during this podcast, when we were doing it, I was doing other podcasts at the same time that Daphne and Steve were doing this. So (laughs) I kind of lost track of what was going on. And I was like, the last time I remember, it's like, wait, didn't Melanie get tossed out and into the snow and she was stranded and she met and weird encountered people? and then. There was this whole thing about finding, like, oh, wait, the weather's fine here. I could breathe. I don't have to have this equipment. So it was kind of strange for me to jump into it, but it was, I just found it new and fresh. Now, the fact that we're in New Eden, and I think that's what we start off in, from what I recall, Mm -hmm. in this episode is everybody's trying, a lot of the people left Snowpiercer. They literally left Snowpiercer to start up new eden in this area that is healthy to live in it's still cold outside obviously because they're wearing coats but you get to see that they're creating a society for people to live in in the real world and everybody has a uh a part to play in it and have great chemistry and community apparently there's like very much like the walking dead they have a council or something Mm -hmm. that they they have for leadership at a certain point and it was really it was done really well and i liked it and i like to see that where it's like it kind of reminded me of alexandria after the fall of alexandria or with the whispers and everything and then it became yeah. a community so just to use that use that as a reference but i really did enjoy it uh it, it showed that uh layton was trying to be controlling still and not be controlling at the same time and it's this is my forecast but we'll probably get into the more discussion per episode it sounds to me like he's becoming trying to be more of a little bit more of a dictator than anything yeah well i've got a lot to say about him and coming up (laughs) (laughs) well davi diggs is really amazing as an actor and he was great as this character and he propelled the show so much uh Honestly, I, overall, I really did enjoy it. I, I liked the uh, because some some people in the community were not working well with the idea, so that that's part of what I liked. Uh, what did you like, or what didn't you like? Uh, I, I really liked, like you said, the the whole setting of uh, a new new world, so to speak. Um, I thought they brought in some interesting plots. I thought it was uh, kind of fun to try to figure out who the stalker is. Um, they brought up a lot. Of, it, it, I was concerned how they were going to carry on, but they brought in some fun, not fun, but interesting ways to suck me back into it. Most of it I really enjoyed. I loved Ruth, seeing Ruth in a leadership role. Uh, yes. She's always my favorite character once she grew her conscience. I 
really liked the way they introduced, you know, when Audrey came back and that whole not one of us scenarios made me think a lot of Lost when Charlie was in the the uh, underwater and he holds his hand up and he's like, not Penny's boat. Uh, that gave me chills. So I was like, oh, I can't wait to see where this goes. But I like the setting. I thought that the the CGI, everything they did, the way they set it all up was great. And I, I like seeing each character trying to find their own way separate of Snowpiercer. Yeah. The, like I said, they're, they're trying to have a sense of community and we don't know who that stalker is. Uh, it feels like a form of terrorism within the community at a certain point, And they're trying to figure out who it is. But a lot of the people within the community are, you know, resistant against it's like why am i doing all this work because either they were part of the higher class on the train where they were like, yeah. it's like i don't oh, like you, this i don't like this i have to actually do work but yeah we get the troops that nan and uh until uh ben until i have nan i don't know why i you know <laughs> these are from my notes everybody so you could hear all the mistakes i do uh ben until uh encounters in the beginning of the episode was a bit of foreshadowing of where we're going within the season mm -hmm. and what direction the show is going so with any apocalyptic show that you have when it's a sense of community and everybody is like surviving survive and then on the other hand you get the other people so you could see from both points of view so i think we're gonna get those both points of views of uh these so obviously they set it up for the fact is you got layton's crew and you got this other crew and they have their own agenda so, you know we have new eating on one side and we got whatever else the conflict is with these troops so you could look at layton as being a dictator and an, an evil person kind of like how people looked at rick grimes and how mm -hmm negan was or even the governor at one point from walking dead so it's part of that whole trope of apocalyptic society and how we all survive and how certain communities are looked at and if you look at it as just the overall watcher like in the marvel cinematic universe well if you look at at this point mr leighton is taking struggling with his <laughs> crew and his people and then if you look over here <laughs> and then you can look at it as both of them are bad or both are good, but it just basically this, this first episode gave us that feeling overall. What I liked was, okay, you're seeing progress. There's some retaliation within <laughs> dissension in the, uh, the community itself, but people are still struggling to work together to get it to where it needs to. They're still in somewhat uh, communication with Snowpiercer, uh, Snowpiercer and Big Alice, from my understanding. Yeah, um, they're trying. Uh, but I think I, I have a note here talking about Alex, how she's was kind of very standoffish when they were talking about, have you heard from Snowpiercer? And uh, I liked that the way they took that is I thought she was afraid to reach out to Snowpiercer because she's afraid they won't be there. And then her mom won't be there. So she'll be gone. So yeah. I thought that was a, a neat little emotion to bring into the, into it. But so, yeah, they're trying to reach Snowpiercer. I think that was a big part of the plot is where are they? They should be close. And then I like very much how they started at nine months later, but then we'll go into it in episode two, how they go back to nine months ago and they switch back and forth between these episodes. I really like how they've laid that out this season. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, there's one note that I have is be Oz telling Zara that Snowpiercer is gone. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. And that they are all dead, which they're not. <laughs> <laughs> but I can understand, especially in Oz's current frame of mind, I can understand automatically going to the negative. Yeah, that a lot of them tend to go that route because of the negativity that was on the train altogether. Right. <laughs> it then, was a yeah. sad, 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 scary place for the most it, part. It is. And uh, you did mention Alex, and but she was bleeding on Big Alice at mm -hmm. a certain point. I thought too. that was, I was very intrigued to see where that leads. And if we get into that more episodes. Like yeah. And I have to admit to you, the CG, the CG's always been very done very well with the show. Now it's on AMC Plus. 
in comparison before where it was, I'm forgetting, what was it, TNT or? It's uh, TNT, yep. So, yeah, and uh, the budget's still there for the, the show. This is the final season, everybody. For those comic book readers that have read the trades that were out for this, that was French. I didn't even know there was a comic book. That's why we covered this, because this was based upon oh. a French comic book trade that uh, our friend Cat Craft had mentioned when the show first came about. And when we first, before we even started with the first season, Becky, we uh, literally did the movie that had Chris Evans yeah, and Harris yeah. in it. So we covered that. So there was a lot more. And we uh, we kind of thought, okay, that particular Snowpiercer is a different world or different take on it <laughs> <laughs> or something in the future that happens after but we won't know that until the end of this season with uh what happens to new eden but yeah overall i did enjoy the episode and i i like where it's going to some degree with the the tension within the community but that's about it for me for uh episode one for this new season what about you my same that's a went through all my notes there you go. All right. We'll move right along, go right into episode two, The Sting of Survival. And the synopsis for that particular episode is Milius and his animal squad storm the train. <laughs> Melanie realizes something is wrong and shuts the vault doors to the engine. When Ben's life is threatened, Melanie surrenders the engine. And uh, which actually gives us a little bit of information of what happened because you got Ben and Till and we only see. But this is like previously on or this is what you didn't see within uh, the episodes before or previous seasons or what happened. So it, it's like literally we're playing catch up. It's going, mm -hmm. OK, here's where we are presently. But now this is what actually happened. So it's not to make it look like because in the first episode that Melanie's people were the ones to blame for the attack or terrorizing of New Eden. Right. Now we know it's part of that is right, but part of it is wrong because literally it's whoever jumps on the train at that point. I so. laughed so loud when they entered the guy introduced himself as the uh, international peacekeeping forces. And I'm like, <laughs> did you peacekeeping? Uh, <laughs> peacekeeping. You it, got guns. You're attacking us. Okay. Right. And it kind of, <laughs> it kind of was, it, it felt a little too much. I love the actor that they cast. I think Clark Gregg is his name or yeah, Greg it is Clark. Clark Gregg. Um, he's yeah. so good. Uh, plays the part so well. But it seemed, I know it's for the sake of shock value and mystery and suspense, but I felt like he, it was too much for them to come on, guns blazing, shoot Till. I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. Yeah, and at one point you think, oh, great, Till's dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I shouted, oh, no, 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 not Till. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, and then it, they kind of, like, Honestly, this is spoiler, everybody. So you all know you honestly, we're four episodes in episode five drops today and we're recording on August 16th. It's a Friday. So if you AMC plus you're watching episode five already, if you're already caught up, but <laughs> <laughs> this is, is so great because it's the way they drag it out and you, they, they, they pull on your heartstrings for the characters that you love. Mm -hmm. so i that's what the first thing is like ah they shot till damn oh it's like then we have to struggle with her because like is she or isn't she is she or is she right so but yeah i i and then the, i agree with you with the how the soldiers come on the uh his he's an admiral apparently mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh clark Gregg is great we all remember him from agents of shield yes as well in the avengers he's uh I'm uh, forgetting the actress's real name, but he was married to her and she played baby in um, Dirty Dancing. Yeah. Oh, Jennifer Grey. Yeah, that was Jennifer Grey's husband at one point, <laughs> Clark oh. Gregg. So I, I thought it was good. I always enjoy him in any roles that he has. A lot of them are usually comedic or he's a good person dramatically. Well, in this case, he's playing this 
bad guy. He's or, not nice. He's not a nice guy, <laughs> even though he comes in for peace. Everybody, <laughs> right? I, I, my note here says, "Why did they come in with so much force when it looks like they're all reaching for a common goal?" But then I'm like, "This is Snowpiercer," <laughs> and they. They They'll want lead control you down the a trail, train. and then they'll yeah. be like, surprise. So it, it really made me, it, once I got past my eye roll, it really made me interested to see what is driving such force and such. Yeah. And then as we get into the next couple of episodes, we'll be able to dive more into why they're doing what they're doing, which was a really good, neat little twist, I think. I, I like the fact that... Uh... You know, the intro by Melanie's with her monologue is great. I always think it's great whenever they do those opening monologues saying, and then they use the one <laughs> thousand and one cars going strong. Yeah, I, I've got, I got her. It was Audra for episode two. Oh, it was Audra that, mm-hmm. that said it? Okay, I got that wrong. <laughs> yeah, because she said, I tried to warn New Eden. Instead, they were blindsided, just like we've been on the train. After Big Alice left us, we circled the globe, not knowing whether our friends and loved ones were dead or alive. And then we were finally close enough to hear from them, all of us waiting for a sign. We waited month after month, the guilt weighing us down. And when we finally did get a sign of life, it wasn't from New Eden. The night before Melanie saw the rocket was the last we knew of peace. And with a single shot, the peace ended on Snowpiercer, 879 cars long. I love that. I liked it when Ruth did it. Yes. And instead, it was New Eden with however many souls strong. I thought that was great. That was a good twist on that when when it came to that episode. And Ruth is also a character I did enjoy. And it was a good change for that character. And mm-hmm. I still feel that way. Yep. Uh, if you watched previous seasons all the way from the very beginning in season one, you go, I hate that person. You just don't like them. But they the actors doing great and making you hate them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but then ten what an episode later you're like, okay, you're not so bad. I, I love how till uh they wouldn't till and it says in here for me is like and Jinjo is upset, but of course Till's being st- still being this strong person that they are. <laughs> And it's just like, you're just like trying to give you tending love and care and you're being a jerk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like her and Audra, Till and Audra as a couple. Yeah. Um, I love her. Aud- I keep saying Audra, but it's Audrey. I love her costumes. I'm glad they're getting back to her original being the show stopper. And I really liked that in that episode. Yeah. Let's see, I'm looking at something else I thought was really cool in this episode was when Ben shot the soldier with what he and Melanie made with the tube. Oh yeah. That was a that was pretty cool. It was a MacGyvered way to get out of that little confined cabin yeah. to get out of there. But did you notice like the yes. weird like blackish smoke coming from him. And I was which, like, is that blood evaporating? And I mean, what is that? It, it gave me, again, I'm going to, a lot of Snowpiercer gave me lost vibes. And that made me think of the black smoke. It also gave me vibes of, remember they had the, oh, I'm forgetting what season, like I said, everybody, I wasn't really paying attention half the time I was doing <laughs> the editing. But I remember those characters that were soldiers at one point that were made up and they look like husked uh, corpses <laughs> that went, were able to take on the, uh, the snow. They could go out in sub-zero cl- uh, weather and stuff like that. I forgot. I think that might've been two. Yeah. It might've been ep- uh, season two, but it reminded me of that, but it reminded me of like, there's something underlying that was just a foreshadowing of what we're probably going to find out. We're probably going into, I'm going to say what eight, episodes of probably 12 on this particular show for the season. So I wouldn't be surprised if that comes back around by episode five mm-hmm. or six and yeah. then, and then we'll figure it out. There's gotta be something going on because how did these guys survive in the extreme winter? Did they, were there experiments done on them? Mm-hmm. But then again, we see Melanie seeing the scientist that she worked with when she worked with Wolford before, Snowpiercer became a thing. Yeah. And, yeah. 
and uh yeah he was taken by the government to help and that's how he got stuck with these guys and you know she learns this when she and her uh, and like he putting and my notes because i forgot ben's name but, <laughs> but uh her lover ben to take snow piercer back with the crazy tactics like she you know that Be- becky just mentioned but the fact is is that the reason why she hands over everything that's going on now to anton is because she's more concerned about ben and for her people there too Mm -hmm. but it's literally handing over again to somebody who would be like wolford was right you're just you got rid of one one threat is gone and now you're trading it for another one yeah but i think too once she had more of a chance to talk with Nima and she was telling Ben, you know, they're going to, they're going to help. We're going to help, but they're going to do it with no guns and whatnot. So they, the Admiral did not, was not honest and upfront with her. So she walked away from the train and said, yeah, we'll do this. Not knowing the full scope of what was about to happen. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting, uh, it, like I said, everything's going to unfold. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it always does in these stories. <laughs> We're just a lot of it is expectation or ex- uh, like expecting more to come. Mm-hmm. But we don't get that. <laughs> but you, it's like, here, you got to wait. You got to wait. But these shows are episodically. So you can't just binge everything, everybody. It's not a Netflix show. It's not an Amazon Prime show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they will make you wait for it. But it's oh, worth it. It is worth it. All right. So I think we covered episode two enough but uh we could i guess we could roll into episode three okay episode three title life source Leighton demands to use big alice to rescue liana ruth now mayor of new eden refuses because it's the town's power supply Leighton makes hobby jury rig a solution giving them three weeks of electricity this is where i'm going to go on my Leighton rant so you go ahead and say whatever your thoughts are <laughs> Oh, my Leighton rant's probably about the same as yours. It's like he's going off the cuff. He's going off the reservation. He went nutty poo thinking and literally utilizing his power to do what he wants because of his daughter and the the loss of uh, his lover at that point, if you think about it. And I and it, I love one of my favorite Ruth moment was when she he's going off on his I'm doing this I'm taking Snowpier or Big Alice and Ruth's like well then you're doing away with this whole democracy yeah. that you chose to set up she yeah. I really I'll get back to her in episode when we talk about episode four as yeah. regards to that but it was really cool to see her stand up to him but I just. I'm not a parent. I have no idea what it was like if somebody took, I mean, if somebody took one of my cats and ran, I'd be mad. Um, yeah. But, and I understand his want to to find her, but there's a, you've made this choice. You led these people to this place mm-hmm. to start a new life. And now you're saying, oh, hey, good luck. <laughs> I'm going to take your, your life force and go find my kid. I may or may not be back. And then to be take people too. Yeah. And, and (laughs) hobby, poor hobby to be, he just, and hobby was so sweet and so calm. And so that was such a well-acted deal conversation with Layton when he was like, you're not a bully. Um, I'm doing this because I care. And Layton was still a jerk. I, (laughs) that, that, that bugged me a lot. Yeah, uh, I think Harvey was the one that where they thought he was a little bit crazy for a little bit too. Well, he had the, the Harvey was the one that was a, a Wilford tortured him and then sick the dog on him. Yeah, and that's the, why he's like yeah, seeing yeah, things yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's it's got- like everybody's a little bit cautious. Like, can we trust him? We don't know. <laughs> And then when he starts bringing up things and he brought it up because even when um, New Eden was threatened with what happened there, they, he saw something and he, it was like, he was, wasn't even sure of himself. Mm-hmm. So he, when he brings it up to, to them and that's, that's why <clears throat> Leighton's like trying to 
get him on his side. But yeah, I have to agree with that. It's like Leighton's trying, he's trying to play. Yeah. The whole, whole idea of new Eden at the very beginning was community for all democracy, but no, he shows, Oh no, I'm the leader. I'm the dictator. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to take a bunch of y'all to come with me and we're going to go yeah. <laughs> get big Alice and take some cars. By the way, we're straining you. You might not have electricity for a while too. Right. So th- and, they're no all, and then those people are pretty much against it and protesting it. And I don't blame them. They're trying to survive, mm-hmm. but how are they supposed to survive with that? During that, they don't know if the the weather's going to shift and it's going to drop below a, at certain points because it's still cold outside. Right. Yeah, but, it was minus. The, uh, let's see, I wrote down it was one hundred and seventeen minus one hundred and seventeen degrees was the original temp. Well, in, in episode one, so and they, it's not like they have a, a, a true meteorologist that can say hey, a cold front's moving through. So yeah, you might have three weeks of electricity left, but there's no guarantee that that's enough to stop a storm that may come through, which, you know, all signs point to watch out. But it was, uh, I just, everything with Leighton, everything, as long as everything's good, he's all for peace and democracy. But the second something goes wrong, especially if it directly involves him, he's off the rails. And it just, yeah. it, it really bugged me. And I also am not crazy about the plot of him going after them because they stole his baby. I think they could have used Audrey showing up to say, Hey, you know, the snow piercer has been taken. Well, we need to go save snow piercer that would have been a much better storyline than the storyline they chose. Yeah. I yeah. Think. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to hijack big Alice, take those cars and go uh, take all the tailies that were there that will be standing by my side. So I could go get my daughter. Right. And it's kind of like the Rick Grimes attitude. It's like, I got to get to my people. <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, my kid or whatever. <laughs> I understand the writing within it and how they, they think, but they, they could have, come up with a different story and and the death of his lover too at that point it kind of was like he didn't lose his mind he didn't go crazy she just died Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it was like oh okay but i love how ruth tells off leighton like you said you know she Mm -hmm. goes the the days of hijacking trains are over so i think that's pretty cool that was um, I like this the the way they talked about um on Snowpiercer that uh, trying to get the the guard was he that he was ele- quote unquote electrocuted, um, and then they started talking about that fertilizer, and I was like. I think that there might be something fishy about the fertilizer. And then oh, yeah. they point, they they paint Nima, I think his name is Nima, um, out to where one minute he's got to be a bad guy. And then the next minute he's, that guy acts, acts that part so well. Cause once one second, I'm like, you are a jerk. And then the next second, I'm like, I think you're going to be an asset. And then a minute later, okay, no, you're really a jerk. So he's doing a great <laughs> job of pulling me one way to the other. Yeah, the, the fertilizer is definitely a catalyst. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they thought it, it was cyanide at one point. And, yeah. you know, they, uh, this is something I picked off an article. It's like there's something chemical here, not poison, despite the dead soldier having chemical burns on him not electrical ones. So it makes me think that something's going on with that fertilizer. And that's where that little black mist or gas mm-hmm. that came out of them with that one that they killed <clears throat> or disposed of uh, to get out of their little cabin cell. So I'm thinking, okay, here we go. But it's also like from the movie when 
they realized the bugs that that they were creating on the train and they were eating them (laughs) and that was out of the food from if you remember the movie so it's kind of similar to that so it's like okay we're going back again so it's like they're going to try to utilize something in that respect in that scheme for you comic book readers uh that are out there i only got to read the first trade so that's the only one that i got but um I, I know that they had a bunch more after that. So if those of you listeners that have read it and want to send in any thoughts on yeah, that, that would be share. great. Please share your thoughts and how it's been adapted with this. Uh, so. Um, I have one more thought on episode three. Uh, it made me laugh when the Admiral calls up Ben to fix the electrical system. And he and then he makes the comment about he's worried that they're up to something yet. Okay, I'm going to leave you and your partner in crime who know every inch of this train inside and out. I'm going to leave you alone to go wander around with no guards and do whatever it is you do. I was like, it, it just kind of felt as harsh and hovering as the admiral is i thought that was kind of loosely written but again i'm trying to be open-minded that they have to move the plot forward and that was the way that they chose to do it but it may it kind of made me laugh yeah i agree (laughs) Uh, i have no other thoughts on the episode other than that uh the like I said, it, as annoying as it was, it was enjoying to see Leighton lose it a little bit. <laughs> and that was about it. Because yeah. that, that's literally what uh, some of the episode was, is like Leighton just saying, oh, I'll screw all y'all in this community I, that I created. I'm going to do what I need to do for me because my kid's out there and somebody took them. And, oh, you, 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 you are coming and we're taking three cars. What? <laughs> and then that's about it. But I... I did enjoy it because it had the drama. It had the feel, but Mm -hmm. the direction it was going was against what the show used to be uh, at one point based upon that one particular character. If you look at late. Yeah. But it was cool. How Ruth, I loved that kind of build up at the end where she's like, we're going to, I'm not going to let you take the train we're going to put it to a vote. Yeah. This is a democracy. This is what we're going to do. That made, that gave me season one, one train, the tailies trying to, you know, fight for their rights. That, that gave me that old school snow piercer feeling. I really, I really like that part. Yeah. And it, and it's, in this case, it's more of a reverse role mm-hmm. because Ruth was on the other end of the ladder. Whereas Leighton was down and below with the tailies. Yeah. And that's how it all started. Yeah. So it's kind of going, you know, full circle at some respect. Not to, or the train going around constantly <laughs> and back all around the world. It's another revolution. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I guess on to episode four. Yes. All right. Episode four is entitled North Star. Big Alice catches up to Snowpiercer. Milius radios them, inviting Leighton over. Sensing a trap, Leighton and Josie sneak on to Snowpiercer. Nima is worried about Leighton, uh, worried Leighton will be gassed and attempts to disarm the greenhouse car. Hmm. So, yeah, uh, this was an interesting one. It was. Uh, I liked the back and forth between. Leighton and Milius, Ad- or the Admiral, uh, both knowing each are full of crap, um, but still, <laughs> still uh, talking their their game back and forth to each other. And he's like, "Come to have breakfast." Um, uh, it's like the well, it's like, yeah, let's have whiskey, <laughs> Rick and <laughs> the Governor. Oh God! Uh, it, it, it was a lot of it was posing. Mm-hmm. A lot of it was posing of authority to towards one another between Milius and Leighton at that point. And that's what I what I was getting out of it. And and I'm like, there, there's nothing going to come about this other than more violence. 
Yeah. So that that's yeah, and I just love how in the very beginning, Leighton briefing the troops, and he's going to jump back into the subtrain after they go dark and strike Snowpiercer hard, and they need to organize an extraction, but not a revolution. And of course, that you know flies in the face of Leighton's uh, original yeah. ideas in the seasons past of you know liberating people and helping them. Yeah, you know. It's like I said, it's more of uh, let's just take charge. Let's take over this train. I would take over these people with that. It cracked me up where uh, when they did manage to sneak onto the train and sweet Tristan is so excited to see Layton and he's like waving at him and almost blows his cover. Um <laughs> That 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 made me laugh. I am very, 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 very interested in getting, and I hope we get a backstory on Nima. What are your thoughts on that? I would like to. You know, it, 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 there's something hidden in there, mm-hmm. and you know, there, there's some a lot of toxicity within the cars. So uh, I'm I'm curious of how they're going to work that out within the the show and the characters. I'm just reading through some of my notes, everybody. So please don't mind me if I sound like I'm just like talking what's on my mind. <laughs> That's what you're here to do. <laughs> um, uh, but there's a lot of black smoke pumping into them through. Yeah through at this time too so that makes me think the black smoke again that came out of that guy so uh, but i don't think that has anything to do with what they're inhaling i think it has to do with more of the other chemicals that are around them it could be between yeah. the fertilizer and whatever they were taking from that scientist and we yeah. still have yet to see or get that conversation no and i i think i really think there's been I don't know how to how what extreme, but it seems to me like there's a lot of there's been some experimentation that's gone on. And I don't know if it's just, you know, these guys being power hungry and hey, let's see how this works. If it's a what can we do to our bodies to help us survive what seems to be an eternal winter. Uh, I can't quite figure out why it's so important, but I think there's, and it's obvious that Nima has had something to do with why those soldiers are the way they are Mm -hmm. based on his reaction with the, the one that was not doing so hot. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Nima actually thought that. Yeah. Yeah. And then he goes and does what you think is a move to help the crew, but then he's right back to being on the admiral side. And I'm like, what is your, what is your deal? I really, really want to know. What is he giving you that you really like? Are you, is he giving you drugs? Uh, right. yeah. But the, the it's funny, so cool. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have one thing here that I had written down from uh, another, um, somebody that covered it online, but the way they mention it is one, one man that they're not expecting to portray them, though, is Nima, and he manages to convince one of the soldiers to let him clear his air. In example, mm-hmm. poison him. Mm-hmm. And as we learn, they used to be test subjects for the toxic chemicals we've been seeing. So obviously, you know, and that's what this person had written. Uh, they're wearing helmets in these suits, not to mention the black smoke pumping into them meaning that they're inhaling all this. Yeah. It's kind of, uh, like you said, it is experimentation very much almost like what we got with season two, Wilford coming on with his people that they experimented on to go into sub-zero weather uh, without any, you know, like they could walk out, like hang on outside of the train as it's moving and high winds and how cold it is and not be affected. Uh, gone are the days of using the cold air as a torture device, kind of similar like they did in the movie where they throw somebody's hands outside the train. Oh, uh, I bet visuals, yeah, that's with me forever. Just his arm in the hole, just yeah, freezing off. That's wild. Um, 
to Kim, that is probably the plot point I'm most excited about. And, you know, it's like, where's Melanie? Mm-hmm. But I don't think Melanie has a single clue what's going on because it's no. obvious that they aren't. Ben isn't able to talk to her. Till isn't able to talk to her. And she's doing, and obviously Nima apparently is going to lie for the Admiral and whatever, even if he's allowed to leave and be, you know, to communicate with her. Mm -hmm. But it's like, so, and the the sweatshop, so to speak, with them, the labor. Yeah, the labor, but people are being used as labor. Uh, I guess people are a resource. Mm -hmm. And they're utilizing the people on there. Some people thinking, oh, yes, this works out. We're working together as a community to do this. But no, the Admiral is still the dictator that's forcing you. And this is like, it it just reminds you of the world we live in with certain governments that force people to work and push them down. They give them minimal stuff, almost like a communist, uh, communist society. Some people look at it as extremely terrible. Some people have different viewpoints of it. Then you have the democracy of what we have from Leighton's New Eden. and But we see that happening on the train again. It's almost similar to what was going on with Snowpiercer when you first saw the first season and how the tailies were stuck to do all these grueling jobs where the upper class were up front and had their own, like, wonderful world like i i i still look at the first season as an amazement because of certain cars like the water car where you see get they have the lobster and the fishes and everything yeah uh they have the garden car too and and then you have uh like in the movie they had it where you had a bunch of kids and it was a t uh, like a class uh-huh. for kids and stuff like that but whereas everybody else was grueling and working and part of the working class but in it's this like, case, everybody that's a community that was been on Snowpiercer is being utilized by the Admiral to here. You got to work in order to get, you know, obtain your food for the day or, you know, you finish your shift so you could actually sleep. So and you, you start to reflect on where it's like it, the uh, Snowpiercer itself has gone full revolution mm-hmm. on itself as a community, as well as the train itself is coming back around again, in my opinion, I'm seeing it as like a whole thing. It's history (laughs) repeating itself. It is. It is. But uh, the the main goal literally for all of them is uh, to find that sense of new Eden, to find a sense of community and get out of this. And is the Admiral really looking for that? At this point, I don't think so. No. I, think, I think he just wants to control and just keep going with this mm-hmm. train. But that's just me. <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't, I don't know what his end game is, but he definitely he wants control. He he's a power hungry guy, and you can tell that it's that power that makes him feel important, and the way he kind of put down Nima with the push-ups and talk down to him in front of other people. It's like, he's a know your place kind of guy. So I don't think he really has anyone but himself. You know, he has his own best interest. I don't think he cares about anybody else. He's not uh, shown no. that yet. <laughs> oh, no, no. We don't know his agenda really. Yeah. Uh, um, oh, the one thing I did, found interesting was uh Osweiler showing Roach the severed hand he found in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> uh and I, I and not to point uh like to make a joke about it, but Javi doesn't know how to handle this. <laughs> what does he say? Uh I wrote that's one of my quotes. I'll go ahead and say it. Um uh, re, uh, re, generally speaking, if a severed hand is lying around unattended, something bad has happened. And then Javi's like, people really need to stop leaving weird shit in my workshop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that made me laugh so hard. Those Roche is, I love him this season. And I hope that what we saw at the end of this episode doesn't mean he is done for for the season 
But I need people to stop going on these live searches at night in the middle of a snowstorm. What do they think is going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, con- I'm concerned. I hope, I hope everything's going to be okay with him. Oh, I'm wondering what that chip does in that hand that they have. Too. Well, that's what opened the. Remember, they used to have the thing that opened the doors. Oh yeah, that's what that was. So it was somebody from Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer. Yep, yep. So at least they knew that. But uh, yeah, it's so funny. It's like it's so funny how with it's like Leighton and 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 the Admiral were playing cat and mouse. Mm-hmm. throughout the whole thing and it, it, you know we're I, and as i noticed this i think it's at the midpoint i think it's about eight to ten episodes maybe i'm not sure but uh <laughs> it's just like they, they gotta like clear it up before we get to the very finality of everything of like where is it gonna end off are they gonna rush it they shouldn't rush it like some shows that we all know <laughs> <laughs> well, they had so much time to plan and finish this oh, final yeah. season. They better uh, was, 10 episodes is what we're looking at. Yeah, that we're going to get. But um, the funniest is, is that, yeah, like you said, they had so much time, but they actually started filming it at one point and then they had to stop. And it was through uh, during COVID, but that's when the shift of, you know, where it was going to be viewed upon, like whether it be on TNT or AMC, that's when it shifted again. Maybe that something got lost in the writing at one point. Maybe, hey, yeah. So, so they they're trying to make sense of what they had written already, and then elaborate on it, and then try to extend it, and then we'll get to that course corrected yeah. <laughs> episode for the last they two will write the train so to speak <laughs> yeah the, yeah but yeah that's about it for me when it came to like my notes for this particular episode yeah the only the last thing i say is it was a good episode good drama uh i think the liana not being there on the on snow piercer was a nice twist yeah yeah the, it was a nice twist, but it makes you concerned of where is that kid? <laughs> yeah. It just opens up the questions of, well, is she with Melanie? Did they take the, if they're going to experiment on that baby, what are they doing? What was the point of, of taking the kid, of taking that child? Yeah. So I'm very, I'm very curious to see how that hopefully turns into a, Good part of the story, not just a silly plot to get us Snowpiercer and Big Alice back together. Yeah, very true. We um, shall see. We'll see. Uh, all right. So we went through our notes and our, our thoughts of certain characters and a lot through the episodes of one through four. Uh, do you have any more quotes? I do. Um the first one, and I laugh because I say this to my husband all the time. When Audrey, there, she's getting ready to, uh, or Till thinks she's getting ready to get on the little sidecar to go to New Eden, and Audrey says, "You're crazy. You know that I wouldn't last three seconds in this thing, and if you die in this thing, until just stops her and says, I promise I'll come back to haunt you." Um. I love that. I just say that to my husband all the time. So that one made me laugh. And then I've got uh, Till says that Till and Ben are talking and he says, she says, so the Admiral lied about the job. Shocking. That also means your buddy Nima co-signed all this. And Bennett says, uh, your distrustful nature wins again. Happy. And Till says ecstatic. And then the last one I have is uh, Alex talking with Javi about Mr. Sprinkles. And Javi says, is that how he died? And Alex says, no, exsanguination. And Javi says, exsanguination? So his blood's gone? Do we need to worry about vampires now on top of everything else? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that's that funny. Yeah. Uh, we know in that universe they have uh they they know of vampires, but right. It's like, a real thing. A, yes, bring give me a vampire <laughs> on Snowpiercer. <laughs> well, it is sucking the life out of you as you watch the show. <laughs> Depending yeah. on how you feel about it, I guess. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> uh, I got a few. One okay. would be from Leighton in the, the first episode. A lot of them are from the first, but that's pretty much all I got. Uh, Leighton saying, it turns out my mother was right. Before she passed on, she held my hand and said, don't worry, son. Endings are just beginnings in disguise. <laughs> that's a Which good is, one. It is true, that though. Is. Yeah, that's kind of a it's very. Um, there's a word that's not going to come to my head. So, no, that's a good one. <laughs> that, um, you got another one? Yeah, I was saying, I know what crazy sounds like. I was married to a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> that was regarding him hearing oh, voices the, in the air. Yeah, knowing the that, daughter of the mean guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Next one for me would be from Jean Joe. And the night before Melanie saw the rock, it was the last we knew of peace. And with a single shot, the piece ended on Snowpiercer, 879 cars long. So good. That's a good, that, that's one of their best intros I think they've had. Yeah. Uh, I completely agree with you on that one. And lastly, Anton, of all things, I had to bring it up. You kind of mentioned it before, but this is an international peacekeeping mission. <laughs> we are authorized to use force. <laughs> <laughs> and I've thought to myself exactly what you would think. It was like, that's a little ironic, don't you think? Peace right. with force. <laughs> I think that those two things do not go. One of these things is not like the other. Um, exactly. I found one more. Um, it's Sykes and Javi. Talking about the hand, uh, judging by the frost burn, this thing was frozen recently. And based off the fracture, it was ripped right off the arm. And Javi says, you got all that just by looking at it. And Sykes says, I spent seven years on a train with Wilford. This isn't my first dismembered limb. <laughs> it is true. Yeah. Oh, the, considering how Wilford ran his train. <laughs> Do you have any foreshadowing on Wilford making an appearance? Yes. Yeah, I would not put it past that we see Wilford again. I don't know if he's going to be with Anton <laughs> or if he's going to be on Big Alice. I feel like he's if he's if he's going to show up which I, I i think it's inevitable that he will i think he's got to be behind part of this international quote unquote peacekeepers um he probably made a deal with anton for all we know <laughs> that's true that is very true <laughs> he's such i drove it one of the things that makes me laugh and again it's a tv show yeah um that the number of chances they had to end him and end his just because I went back and watched a few episodes of the past three seasons just to refresh my memory because it's been so long. And some of the stuff that he did. Oh, it was, it was a little bit crazy. Horrible. Yeah. And I'm like, how did they just let him go so many times? And not it's with the definition of insanity doing the same thing and over and over again expecting yeah. different results yeah. yeah and he was always a weasel too so mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the he the know how to worst. weasel himself out of uh certain situations but man he plays it well yeah he does all right well i think that about covers our coverage on the first four episodes mm -hmm. of season four of snowpiercer we are going to be covering the remaining portion of the season episodically so expect episode by episode so since it is friday the 16th on august uh i will be putting together our doc for the next episode we will be covering it uh by the time you hear this we will probably be be in the process of recording or just about to but always leave feedback and that's Please. where towards the end of what we're gonna wrap this up with we could tell you how to do that so uh 
but that where else can listeners hear you, Becky? I can be heard wherever Mark will have me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, if you all have not listened to uh, the cross collaborative uh, podcast of the Vampcast, as I call it, we did interview with a vampire, and Becky was on for the last two episodes, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, and then through that, uh, and I think you're going to be on something that I was on at one point as well soon. Yes, is- I am going to be uh, guesting with Kara and Penny on Still Slang. Uh, we haven't set the schedule yet for what episode for season four of Buffy, and I am so excited. Yeah, that's still slaying a Buffy verse podcast that can be found on Podcast everybody. And as well as you know about me, uh, I can be heard here on Panels to Pixels, as always. And uh, you could also hear me on, we mentioned it, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, which was a cross collaborative platform when we did the FAMCast. But we are back to standards for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. We released. In a Violent Nature, Jamie and I, our review of that particular movie. Uh, we will be coming back with another film soon and be covering uh, possibly, I'm going to say we got Demolition Man that's coming up uh, and then a couple other movies that I have in the pipeline. It's just a matter of uh, coordinating and you know scheduling with everybody else that are coming on. Uh, in a Violent Nature came out of nowhere, and I asked Jamie to jump in because she likes the Friday the 13th stuff. And keep in mind, we will be going back to format with the uh, Friday film since uh, watched in the 80s is not covering that. And uh, we're just going to continue it on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Oh, good. But, uh, you know, obviously, you know, there, but in order to find all that, all that other information, now all you have to do is go to piratecoreentertainment.com and you can check out all the other podcasts. It's not all, there's only a couple right now, (laughs) (laughs) but I'm planning on getting something else out there, but, uh, for you to leave any feedback and I will be putting out something that's on a feeler for Facebook and Instagram as always, uh, you see an image. We'll talk from the next episode. It'll say leave in your comments below. So you could just go to our Facebook page, be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Just look and look for that particular post and write it in the comments below. Or same thing with uh, Instagram, which could be found at panels to pixels podcast. Or you could just go and send us a regular uh, email. And that could be sent to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two is spelled out to pixels and the number one at gmail.com. And you could just write out a regular texted email, or you could just record yourself on your smart device, like a phone, or whatnot, and then just send it as an attachment. It'd be greatly appreciated if you could do so. Obviously, uh, we could be found on Apple Podcasts or Spotify if. You know, you could do us a huge favor, give us a, a review. Five stars will be well appreciated. <laughs> and we if love you those. could, <laughs> and then if you could just leave a, a comment there. So, well, next week we are covering Snowpiercer season four, episode five. Don't have the title at the ready right now. But I got it. She got it. <laughs> Everybody. The engineer. The engineer. Oh, it looks, I just, oh, I'm excited. I just, I see a picture and. Now she wants to go watch it, everybody. Now I, I want to go watch it. And then I'm like, Mark, I'll be back in an hour to talk with you about it. <laughs> well, also we will be recording. And uh, I believe if you're listening to this now, by the time I get it out, uh, we'll be recording on the 19th for this particular podcast again because we are doing the umbrella academy so we're going to go episodically with that with uh, steve and myself so uh if you it drops all at once everybody remembers that on netflix so we always get a week or two behind but you know what we like to do it anyway i know you have to hit it at the punch and we're not tv <laughs> podcast industries who we love derek and john and uh, they do a great job there, too. So if you have watched all of 
the Umbrella Academy and want to listen to uh, a podcast that is current and has already watched it all and covered their thoughts, go to TV Podcast Industries and check them out. If you want to go by episode by episode and you haven't even gotten to it yet, just come back to us and listen to us with Steve and myself. We are going to have a little fun with it. Each episode of the podcast shouldn't take that long, probably about a half hour. Oddly enough, this particular episode was only about an hour. So, and we covered four episodes. So it's rock. <laughs> <laughs> My husband would tell you that's the least amount I've talked in a long time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Becky. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This was Panels to Pixels podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone.